Okay, it's recording now. Okay. So yeah, Ryan, uh, we just so we just finished a design here with Ryan. Yeah. And this is the results of our our efforts today, working through a layout here in Texas. And uh, some of the main things that we had to deal with was this 15 foot wall coming down the side of the house, the, the back of the garage, when you're inside looking out, it takes up most of the view. So we had to really figure out a way to three-dimensionally enhance that wall so it wasn't just a uh, an eyesore. And then, uh, a pretty big yard and we, we figured out the uh, the perimeter plantings first, worked our way from outside to in. And once we had this motif and theme going with, how can we dress up with that wall? We replicated the arbor out into the space. This post and beam structure is centered on the architectural massing of the master bedroom that you see here. So those are locked together. And this plank of a sitting wall underscores the oak tree in the distance with the water feature runnels there. And we kept that going to the other side and it breaks through a bench area and resumes on the other side and becomes a sculptural pocket, literally for an art piece. And then we took that sitting wall and replicated it over on this side to balance the yard. Got the fire pit here. There's a sitting area centered here. You'll notice the dormers on the roof overhead. That's how we located this center line for this walkway and for the arbor so that the arbor is in harmony with the architecture going on above. Made a few suggestions to uh, convert a bedroom window to a doorway so they can come out to their spa. And the art piece is on axis with that walkway. So you come out to your spa with the art piece and the golden foliage of the maples in the distance in the fall time. That's kind of a quick overview. Yeah. Ryan, go ahead. I, I wanted you to, Ryan has been through my class and the invitation today was to do an applied design it together uh, experience where we just worked through it together, applied the principles from the class. And so my question for Ryan today was, what did you get out of this interactive experience applying it to one of your projects? What did you do, notice it was done differently than what you've been doing? Yeah. Even though you had my class and you went and implemented it, now that we did it together, what stood out in the process that you hadn't yet implemented yet for yourself? You know, I, I knew from taking the class that, uh, you know, you were always talking about, think about landscaping first. It's like, yeah, I think you've even mentioned it like, taking your process and putting it upside down. Um, most pool builders just stick a pool in and then they put everything else around it. And th honestly, that's the key thing that I took away from your class the first time. And I took your class probably a couple of years ago. Now, what my issue is, is I keep falling back into that bad habit that has been hammered into my brain of, I thought I was doing that. And I would say I was paying more attention, but actually going through the entire process with you seeing how much time and how many times you don't just put the tree there, but we reposition it and we consider all views again, all over again from inside the home. What are those view angles? Is it centering up? What if we pivot to the left? What if we pivot to the right? How are we viewing it as we move through the home? You know, and even considering traffic flows of like, hey, they're gonna not, the client is never going to come in through their front door. They're going to come in from the garage and like, what are they going to see? How are they going to walk in, drop their keys on the kitchen counter and then get back to their bedroom? And what are they seeing along the way? Um, so it was just a much more detailed perspective of that. Um, also, I'll, I'll tell you my own flaw is I, 
I get lazy. <laughs> Um, when I scale in a pool or a house, I have been focused so much on just the first floor plan because I feel like that's all that you know, my clients just want to see the pool and that's all that really matters. But Kirk, you took the time to say, no, no, look, it matters because it's all in proportion. And when we really started to see how tall that wall was on the garage and that there were dormers that I had totally neglected um, in that roof line, uh, that was pretty key. I was like, wow, okay, yeah, those are big key elements that I would have missed. So the difference between what we did today and what I took away from your class and that I've been implementing over the last couple of years is there are so many more details that you need to slow down, take your time and make sure you're considering that. And then also the other thing that I found was just the replication of certain elements. When an element is designed and it, and it fits right and it feels good, um, extending that that large wide beam you know and utilizing the materials off of the home and then carrying it across the whole yard so that it becomes a feature point and it, and it it does it's like it's like a belt that girds everything together right so it it puts this the anchors in the yard but then you replicate it even over on the side yard to kind of draw everything in so that it just makes the faith this entire space feel more complete um so yeah, those were the key things. Uh, and then just the simplicity of like going backwards of like, okay, we need the pool to be here, but are we anchoring it off of the architectural lines of the home? And those were things I was already doing, but just, so that was a good reinforcement that, hey, okay, I've been doing that. You know, like I'm, I'm already 30% into Kirk's head as to what his process is. So I feel like there was a good groundwork of that, but man, today spending this time with you is just, it, it definitely was a reiteration, but an eye opener as to that. And I know a lot of times we weren't necessarily speaking a lot as we're going through that. We would just kind of like mention things and throw them out and bounce the ideas off of each other. Um, but because I already had the class, it, it helped me to know where you were coming from. So it's not like you had to sit there and handhold me the entire time and drag me through every single step. And well, here's why I'm doing this. Now let me stop and back off and explain myself for an hour and a half because you didn't even understand where I was coming from. So, but considering, uh, you know, sight lines and the way the sun falls in the backyard, that helps us to consider what materials are working in this backyard. Um, this backyard faces north. So the garage throws a huge amount of shade over the, um, the backyard in the in the shallow end of the pool and whatnot so you know making sure that you're putting that the epa wood sunbathing area out where there's going to be sun uh, otherwise hey you spent all this money and it's a miss what are you going to get a, a shade burn like that <laughs> doesn't work that way so um yeah it was extremely okay. helpful extremely helpful yeah and for the viewers um there was some feedback that we're gonna this is a custom home so we're we have a list of things for the owner, you know, convert this window to a slider yeah. uh, so you can get out and go to your spa. The Currently, there are no windows on the bedroom Yeah, all in all. This is a very dark room. There's a courtyard here with some glass, but this wall doesn't have it any. So we're offering some suggestions to pop in a window. Maybe there's a nightstand here. The bedroom, the headboard is here. And you know maybe there's some glass on this corner. Um, it would be great for some natural light to be let into the room. And also, if you go in, you kind of show them that corridor. So like when they walk into the bedroom uh, from the main living area, if they don't have that window there, there's nothing. But when you if you do have that window established, um, you can see straight down the hallway, and you can see out into the yard. And it, like, how pleasant is that? You know that oh hey, that there's something out there. And yeah, I, I think you're right. It would be like, I mean, unless you're a vampire, you really need it to be a dungeon in order to sleep, to sleep or whatever. I, I believe in adding natural light for sure. We also moved this sliding wall over. That's right. Give feedback to the owner that this this edge of this window aligns to a hallway in the interior. Uh, it's sort of plan view. And we'll turn on the floor plan we were chasing. Yeah, in 2D. Yeah, in the interior. 
rid of. So on the inside, you come into foyer, there's a hallway, there's a left edge defined. And this sink and countertop ends here, pretty much in alignment with that hallway. But for no reason, this bump out clips your view of the yard. So we're yeah. going to suggest that this door wall that's 12 feet wide slide over so that when you're coming through this hallway from the front door, your view of the backyard isn't getting clipped. By studying a plan through the lens of a camera, you're able to not only do your design better, but you're recognizing things on the house that aren't working yet. And in a custom home situation, you can add value to your client by catching these things in advance and uh, before it's too late. And now they can, uh, that line was maybe 25% over. Yep. This didn't feel right. So it gives them a bigger expansive view. Any anything else, Ryan? Yeah, that was a really good time today. I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah, it was good. Awesome. All right, now I need to move so you can help me design my own pool for the back All back right. backyard. <laughs> do it. We'll do that next. Thanks for your uh, your comments there, and I look forward to hearing how your client responds to this. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you for that.